In a modest urban household in modern-day Egypt, the air was thick with the scent of disinfectant and the low murmurs of a bustling hospital. Layla, a young mother with a gentle smile, cradled her newborn twins in her arms, her heart swelling with love and hope. Her husband Ahmed stood by the window, his gaze distant, his mind elsewhere. Layla's voice, soft and filled with warmth, broke the silence. Layla, Ahmed, come, see how beautiful they are, our little miracles. Ahmed turned slowly, forcing a smile, his eyes briefly meeting those of his sons before drifting away again. Ahmed, yes, they are beautiful, Layla, just like their mother. But his words were hollow, the strain in his voice unmistakable. Layla, too caught up in the moment, didn't notice. The scene shifted to the next day. Layla, exhausted yet content, lay in her hospital bed. A nurse, Fatima, entered, a strained expression on her face. Fatima. Mrs. Layla, I'm afraid I have some terrible news. Layla's heart skipped a beat, her eyes widening in alarm. Layla. What happened? Are the babies okay? Fatima hesitated, exchanging a glance with Ahmed, who stood in the corner, his face an unreadable mask. Fatima. I'm sorry. One of your sons. He didn't make it through the night. Layla's world shattered. Tears streamed down her face as she sobbed, her body shaking. Layla. No, no, that can't be true. I want to see him, please. Ahmed stepped forward, his hand gently but firmly gripping Layla's shoulder. Ahmed. Layla, you need to rest. I'll handle everything. The days that followed were a blur for Layla. She returned home with her surviving son, Omar, her heart heavy with grief. Ahmed became more distant, his absences longer and more frequent. One evening, as Layla cradled Omar, Ahmed entered, reeking of smoke and something else Layla couldn't place. His eyes avoided hers as he rummaged through a drawer, searching for something. Layla. Ahmed, where have you been? Omar and I missed you. Ahmed. Just out, dealing with... stuff. Don't wait up for me. His tone was dismissive. His movements hurried. Four years had passed since the tragic day Layla lost one of her twins. The modest household in Egypt had changed. The walls that once echoed with happiness now bore silent witness to Layla's daily struggles and Ahmed's growing distance. Layla was in the kitchen, preparing a simple meal, while her son Omar played in the living room. The front door creaked open, and Ahmed staggered in, his eyes bloodshot, his steps unsteady. Close on his heels was his old friend Tarek, with a sly grin plastered on his face. Tarek. Ah, the sweet smell of home. How's it going, Layla? Layla offered a forced smile, her patience wearing thin. Layla. Fine, Tarek. Ahmed, Omar's been asking about you. He missed his father. Ahmed grunted noncommittally, avoiding Layla's gaze as he slumped onto a chair. Tarek followed suit, his eyes roving around the house with ill-disguised greed. Tarek. Nice place you got here, Ahmed. Cozy and all. Layla busied herself with serving the food trying to ignore the tension in the air. Layla, dinner's ready. Omar, come eat. Omar, a bright-eyed boy of four, scampered to the table, his innocent smile a stark contrast to the unease among the adults. As they ate in silence, Tarek's voice, slightly slurred, sliced through the quiet. Tarek. So, Ahmed, heard any news from your... Ahem. Investment? Ahmed's fork clattered against his plate, his face suddenly ashen. Layla's hand froze midair, her heart pounding. Ahmed. Tarek, not now. Drop it. But Tarek, oblivious to Ahmed's discomfort and Layla's growing alarm, continued, his voice growing louder and more boisterous. Tarek. Come on, man, that was a genius move, selling that kid for a good sum. You should have seen the look on that rich guy's face when he took the baby. Priceless. Layla's world came crashing down around her. The room spun as she struggled to process Tarek's words. Omar, sensing the tension, became quiet, his small hand reaching for his mother's. Layla, voice trembling. Ahmed, what... what is he talking about? Our son... you didn't... tell me it's not true. Ahmed's face was a mask of guilt and desperation. He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. Tarek, finally realizing the gravity of his mistake, tried to backpedal. Tarek... Ah, uh, I mean, it was just a joke, right, Ahmed? A bad joke. But the damage was done. Layla's eyes, filled with tears and betrayal, bore into Ahmed. Layla, you sold our son? For drugs? How could you? 
Ahmed, now sobered by the severity of the situation, stammered out a weak defense. Ahmed. Layla, I... I was desperate. I didn't know what to do. I thought... Layla, interrupting. You thought what? That our baby's life was worth your next fix? The room was thick with tension, the air heavy with unspeakable betrayal. Omar, frightened by the raised voices, began to cry. Layla. Get out, Ahmed. Get out of this house and don't come back. I won't let you destroy us any further. Ahmed, now fully realizing the enormity of his actions, stood up shakily, his eyes downcast. Ahmed. Layla, I... I'm sorry. But Layla was unmoved, her decision firm. She watched as Ahmed, followed by a sheepish Tariq, left the house. As the door closed behind them, Layla sank to her knees, her sobs mingling with Omar's cries. Layla's living room, once a sanctuary of familial warmth, had transformed into a battleground of shattered dreams and broken trust. The sun had barely risen, casting long shadows across the room where Layla sat, her eyes red from a sleepless night. The door creaked open, and Ahmed entered, his steps hesitant, his face etched with remorse. Ahmed, Layla, I... I need to talk to you. Layla's gaze was icy, her voice steady but laced with an undercurrent of fury. Layla, there's nothing left to talk about, Ahmed. You've done the unthinkable. Ahmed moved closer, a plea in his eyes. Ahmed, please, just hear me out. I know I've made a grave mistake, but... Layla, interrupting. A mistake? You call selling our child a mistake? Ahmed flinched, the weight of his actions crashing down on him. Ahmed. I was lost, Layla. The addiction, it took over me. I never meant to hurt you or our sons. Layla. Your excuses mean nothing now. Where is he, Ahmed? Where is our son? Ahmed's eyes lowered, unable to meet her gaze. Ahmed. I don't know. I sold him to a man, a wealthy one. That's all I know. Layla's heart pounded, her resolve hardening. Layla, I'm going to the police, Ahmed. You can't hide from this. Ahmed reached out, desperation in his touch. Ahmed, Layla, please, think about Omar, our family. Layla brushed his hand away, her voice resolute. Layla, you should have thought about our family before you destroyed it. At the police station, Layla recounted her story to Officer Haney, a man with a stern face but kind eyes. He listened intently, his expression growing graver with each word. Officer Haney. Mrs. Layla, this is a serious allegation. Are you certain about what you heard? Layla. Yes, officer. I heard Ahmed's friend mentioning the sale. My son has been living a lie. Officer Haney nodded, his voice reassuring yet firm. Officer Haney. We will do everything we can to find your son. I assure you justice will be served. Layla nodded, a mix of hope and dread filling her heart. Days passed, turning into weeks, with the police investigation in full swing. Layla spent her days in a haze, caring for Omar while clinging to the hope of finding her other son. Then, one fateful morning, Officer Haney called. Officer Haney. Mrs. Layla, we found him. We found your son. Layla's heart leaped, tears streaming down her face. Layla. Is he? Is he all right? Officer Haney. He's healthy and has been living with a wealthy couple who were unaware of the truth. We need you to come to the station. Layla rushed to the police station, her emotions a whirlwind of fear, joy, and anxiety. At the station, Layla was introduced to Karim and Salma, the couple who had been raising her son, now named Adam. They were well-dressed and looked genuinely distressed by the revelation. Karim. Mrs. Layla, we had no idea. We were told Adam was an orphan. Salma. We've loved him as our own. Please believe us, we never intended any harm. Layla's eyes met Adam's, a mirror image of Omar her heart aching with love and sorrow. Layla, he's my son, my baby taken from me. Salma reached out, her voice trembling. Salma, please let us explain. We can help. Layla's gaze was unwavering, her decision clear. Layla, there's nothing to explain. He's coming home with me. The chapter closes with Layla leaving the station, hand in hand with Adam, her heart heavy with the pain of the past, but hopeful for a reunited future. Behind her, Ahmed, handcuffed and defeated, was led away by the police, his eyes filled with regret and loss. The courtroom was a cold, sterile place, filled with the sounds of shuffling papers and murmured conversations. Layla sat quietly, her hands clasped tightly in her lap, Omar beside her, his small hand in hers. Across the room, Ahmed sat with his lawyer, 
his eyes occasionally darting towards Layla and Omar. The judge entered, and the room fell silent. Layla's heart raced as the judge began to speak. Judge, in the case of the state versus Ahmed El Sayed, we are here to deliver the verdict and sentence. Mr. El Sayed, please rise. Ahmed stood, his face pale. Layla held her breath. Judge, having considered all the evidence presented, this court finds you guilty of child trafficking. You are sentenced to ten years in prison. Ahmed's lawyer whispered something to him, but Ahmed seemed dazed, his fate sealed. As the court adjourned, Layla felt a mix of relief and sorrow. She quickly ushered Omar out, eager to leave the oppressive atmosphere of the courtroom. The next day, Layla sat in a meeting room with her lawyer, Mr. Abbas, discussing the divorce proceedings. Omar and Adam were in the next room, playing quietly. Mr. Abbas. Mrs. Layla, the divorce papers are ready. Once you sign, the process will be finalized. Layla took the pen, her hand steady. Layla. Thank you, Mr. Abbas. This is for the best. As she signed the papers, her thoughts were interrupted by a knock on the door. Kareem and Salma entered, their expressions earnest. Salma. Layla, may we speak with you? Layla nodded, her guard up. Kareem. We've been thinking a lot about Adam. We understand he's your son, but we've grown to love him as our own. Salma. We want to propose a shared custody arrangement. We're willing to provide financial support for both Adam and Omar. Layla's heart clenched. She looked at Mr. Abbas, seeking guidance. Mr. Abbas, it's an unusual proposal, but it's not unheard of. It's ultimately your decision, Mrs. Layla. Layla turned to face Kareem and Salma, her voice firm yet conflicted. Layla, I appreciate your offer, but Adam is my son. He belongs with his mother and his brother. Salma's eyes filled with tears. Salma, please, Layla. We can give Adam a life of comfort, opportunities. We don't want to take him away from you. Just be a part of his life. Layla struggled, torn between her maternal instincts and the life Adam had known. Layla, I need to think about this. It's not just about comfort or opportunities. It's about what's best for Adam. Kareem placed a gentle hand on Salma's shoulder. Kareem, take all the time you need. We only want what's best for Adam. The meeting ended with no resolution, leaving Layla in a state of deep contemplation. She watched Omar and Adam playing, their laughter a balm to her troubled heart. The morning sun streamed through the windows of Layla's home, casting a warm glow over the living room where she sat with her sons, Omar and Adam. The room, once a reminder of her struggles, now resonated with a sense of hope and renewal. Layla looked at her sons, her decision weighing heavily on her heart. Omar, ever curious, broke the silence. Omar. Mama. Will Adam be going away again? Adam, sitting beside his brother, looked up at Layla with wide, expectant eyes. Layla took a deep breath, her voice gentle but resolute. Layla. No, my loves. Adam is staying here with us. We are a family, and we will stay together. Omar's face lit up with a smile, and he hugged Adam tightly. Layla's heart swelled with love and determination. Adam. Really, Mama? I can stay with you and Omar? Layla. Yes, Adam. This is your home, with your brother and me. Just then, a knock at the door interrupted their moment. Layla rose to answer it, finding Kareem and Salma standing on the threshold, their expressions anxious. Salma. Layla, we came to hear your decision. We've been so worried. Layla stood tall, her voice steady. Layla. Kareem. Salma, I've made my decision. I appreciate your offer and the love you've given Adam, but my sons will stay with me. I am their mother, and I will raise them. Salma's eyes glistened with unshed tears, but she nodded in understanding. Kareem. We respect your decision, Layla. Please know that our offer of support still stands. If you ever need anything, Layla. Thank you, but we will be fine. I want my sons to grow up knowing they are strong and self-reliant, just like their mother. Kareem and Salma exchanged a glance, a silent conversation passing between them. Salma. We just want what's best for Adam, and, if you ever change your mind, Layla, I won't, but I promise, Adam will know about your kindness and love. That's important for him. Kareem and Salma nodded, their farewell filled with a mix of sadness and respect. They turned to leave, and Layla closed the door, her heart lighter, her resolve firmer. Layla returned to her sons, kneeling beside them, 
her arms enveloping them in a warm embrace. Layla. My brave boys, life will have its challenges, but we will face them together, with love and strength. Omar, with the wisdom of a child beyond his years, looked up at her. Omar. Mama, we are strong because you are strong. We will be okay. Layla kissed the top of their heads, her eyes misty with tears of joy and relief. Layla. Yes, my dears. We will be more than okay. We have each other, and that's all we need. The chapter, and the story, concludes with Layla watching her sons play, their laughter echoing through the house. She had faced unimaginable challenges, but her love for her sons and her unyielding resolve had seen her through. There was no looking back, only forward to a future filled with hope, love, and the unbreakable bond of family. The story of Layla and her unyielding journey has come to its empowering conclusion. Reflecting on her decision to raise both her sons herself, rejecting the shared custody offer despite the promised financial support, what would you have done in her place? Do you agree with her choice? Or would you have considered the wealthy couple's offer for the sake of the children's future opportunities? Your thoughts and perspectives are valuable to us, so please share them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and the journey we've shared, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our MES Middle Eastern Stories channel for more captivating and thought-provoking content. Your support means a lot to us and helps bring more such stories to life.